as silly as it may sound, if you want DeAndre Hopkins to play for the Tennessee Titans this year, then like the video. Let's get the football gods on Tennessee's side. If you want to see D-Hop play in the volunteer state, hit that thumbs up button. We have a new update to talk about on the never-ending DeAndre Hopkins sweepstakes news, rumors, saga, whatever you want to call it, because the Titans are right in the thick of it after meeting with DeAndre Hopkins in the early portions of last month. But Jeremy Fowler was on SportsCenter talking about Hopkins and where he might end up and what he's hearing, and this is what he had to say. I checked in on this just recently, and I was told the Tennessee Titans are still pretty well positioned here. They're in the mix, and certainly they have a high level of interest from head coach Mike Rabel on. They had a good visit with him a few weeks ago, so they remain in contact, as do the New England Patriots. So both teams are still at the forefront. It seems like the ball is in DeAndre Hopkins' court, right? Both the Tennessee Titans and the New England Patriots tried to wow him and win his heart over. They put on a good show. I found it a bit ironic that Vrabe said, I'm not recruiting. This isn't college football anymore. And then they sent a nice private limo to come pick up DeAndre Hopkins and a first, star tra first class treatment minus the Southwest Airlines flight. May or may not be true. But still, it seems like the Titans and the Patriots have both made their pitches. I am sure they have both talked about numbers and contracts. And at this point, Hopkins, he's probably waiting for a contender to call with a similar contract. Because let's be honest, who's closer to, closer to winning a Super Bowl? The Chiefs, the Bills, or the Titans and the Patriots? He's probably holding out for the next few weeks, waiting for a contender to call, because he wants to get a ring before he retires. And there are other teams who are closer to winning a Super Bowl, no knock against Tennessee or New England. That's just the reality. And the reality is, it's early July. Nothing is going to happen over the next few weeks. So he's in no rush to get a signing done before training camp because that's still close, but not super close. We're still a few weeks away from it. Fowler also added this on Hopkins maybe going to Kansas City. Kansas City has kept in touch. That's a team that maybe Hopkins might wait on if he's in no major rush. Kansas City has to lock up some cap spaces. They're pretty tight right now, and they would have to redo some contracts with players like Chris Jones and others to get some money, get some available money. So if Hopkins doesn't want to wait on that, certainly he's got two teams in the Titans and Patriots that could be ready to get to go at some point this summer. I've heard that Hopkins is willing to wait closer to camp, but that doesn't mean it might not get done in the next week or two, too. I think this could go into August. Training camp for most teams is going to get underway around July 28th, 29th. And the first few days of training camp are a lot of install, a lot of rookies and new guys getting familiar. The pads will come on eventually. I think in August, you might see Hopkins go, all right, I'm done waiting. I was hoping that one of the teams that I really wanted to go to, whether that's Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes, Cleveland reunite with Deshaun Watson, Josh Allen, and Buffalo. Wanted to get a call from them and get a similar offer that I got from Tennessee or New England, but I never got that call. So now I got to make a decision. Do I want to go to the Titans or the Patriots? And there are pros and cons for both of these teams, and we've shown this graphic graphic before. We'll start with the Titans. A pro, it's much more in his wheelhouse in terms of geographic location. It's a southern city. He's from South Carolina, went to Clemson, played in Houston, played in Arizona. He's played and lived his whole life south of the Mason-Dixon. He might want to stay that way, too. Khan, it went 7-10 and 10 last year, and it was not a graceful second half of the season, so not a ton of optimism about Tennessee being a playoff contending team this year. A pro could be, I don't quite know if Hopkins views Tannehill or Mac Jones as an uh, alpha quarterback, but I think Tannehill is better than Mac Jones for 2023. And that's really all DeAndre Hopkins is looking at here. Because if he's only going to get a one-year contract, he needs to remind NFL GMs he's still a 1,000-yard receiver. So which quarterback does a better job of getting him a 1,000 yards? I would say Ryan Tannehill. He did that a lot with A.J. Brown. Khan, 
I, I wonder if Tennessee is going to air out the ball as much as Hopkins will like. He's no doubt going to be the wide receiver one. And this con also applies to New England. I think both of these teams are going to be run-first offenses, and Hopkins might not love the amount of targets he's getting. Now, as for the Patriots, pro, you have Bill Belichick. He's the best in the biz. Con, yeah, I put up with Bill O'Brien again. The coach that traded you away from the Texans, I don't know how you can go to more meetings and look at that butt chin. Pro, you would be the undoubted wide receiver one. This goes for Tennessee as well, but no question about it. And a con, just like Tennessee, both teams finished below 500 last year. Now, when it comes to Nashville or Boston, what's the better city? Because I know Hopkins is watching this right now. And I, with good intel, he will pick his team based on whichever city gets more votes. So let's show the Music City some love. Let's get him down to Broadway. Type Nash for Nashville if you think Nashville is a better city than Boston. Oh, yeah. All right, next up here, let's talk about Braves. Maybe being a bigger factor than we're giving him credit for and getting Hopkins to Tennessee. Because Mike Vrabel was a defensive coach in Houston from 2014 to 2017, and he overlapped with DeAndre Hopkins. Now, Vrabel was initially a linebacker's coach and then a defensive coordinator. Those coaches don't interact a ton with wide receivers, but DeAndre Hopkins had great things to say about Vrabel back in 2018. He said, I had a lot of interaction with him. He's one of those guys that you could talk to off the field. Not just about football, but personal stuff. Vrabel was good to me. It wasn't just a football relationship with him. It was a personal relationship. Guys could relate to him. He's a great guy. He's not just a good coach, but he's a good guy. He can relate to, this, to his players. The Titans are lucky to have him. I mean, Hopkins is basically on his knees right now for Vrabel. I think you're a Titan. You want to go play for Mike Vrabel, someone you spoke very highly of? You want to go live in a state with no income tax? You want to go live in a southern climate where you've been your whole career and you want to play for a better quarterback in Ryan Tannehill than Mac Jones? DeAndre Hopkins, you are a Tennessee Titan. Now, you watching at home can be wearing these awesome Titans t-shirt and hats on sale, by the way. Plus, it's a combo. So you're not just getting one or the other. You're getting the t-shirt and you're getting the hat. So go to chatsports.com slash T-E-N combo. I put that link in the comments and the description the summer months are here. It's hot. Rep your favorite team while also staying cool and shaded as well with this Titans Tennessee uh, Titans t-shirt and hat combo. Now, we know at this point it goes without saying that DeAndre Hopkins would be a major addition to this wide receiver room. I don't think on July, whatever it is, I have to sell anyone on Hopkins being good for this team. I'm not as uberly optimistic about Traylon Burks as maybe some other people are. But this is not a very deep wide receiver room. And if Tennessee wants to give Ryan Tannehill something to throw to, Hopkins would be an excellent target. Plus, this room just doesn't have a ton of experience, right? I mean, when your third leading receiver career-wise is Kyle Phillips with eight grabs and 78 yards, you probably could raise the bar a little bit. And that's no knock against Kyle Phillips. Awesome UCLA Bruin unfortunately had his season cut short last year. But the point remains... There's just not a lot of provenness and uh, veteran presence in this wide receiver room. Hopkins would go a long way. Now, Traylon Burks is an enigma for this year. I don't know what to expect out of the former first-round pick. He didn't have a wonderful rookie season. He missed some time. Didn't really get off to a great training camp either, if you recall. He ended the season with 33 grabs, 444 yards, and one touchdown. Should be two touchdowns. Um, Fumble at the one-yard line. But Traylon Burks, if you don't get Hopkins, a lot of pressure goes on him. Not just because he's a wide receiver one, but because he's a former first-round pick as well. And there is no one else in this wide receiver room that can carry the workload if Burks is having an off night. So every single game will feel that much more important for Burks, knowing, hey, if I don't have my best stuff today, I know I've got some awesome other great players, which I like Westbrook Akeen, I like Phillips, but... They can't hold a candlestick to DeAndre Hopkins. Let's be honest here. So predictive form before we leave, where will Hopkins sign? Let me know in the comment section, whether it's Tennessee, whether it's New England, another team, shoot your shot down below. 
That's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in, taking time out of your day to come hang out with us here. If you have not subscribed, consider going ahead and doing so. If you enjoyed today's show, we're going to get you guys free daily Titans content. Thank you.